to look at 13.1 and 13.2 today, which are called exponent rules. So we have exponential rules here. Uh, we are going to multiply and divide expressions with common bases. Multiply and divide expressions with common bases. And um, really, we're just going to get into all the different ways we deal with exponents. We are going to go through why the rules are what they are. We're going to end up in chapter 13 with about 8 to 10 different rules. And what I don't want, what some people teach to, is here's your list of rules. They're very nice and organized, and you just refer to them. And you just hope that you pick the right one for the right reason, and then you do something with it, and you come out with the correct answer. But you don't really understand why the rules are the way they are. And I'm going to try to help you understand those rules so that we don't have to light lean on them and have to refer to them. We just can understand exponents enough to get to the correct solution without having to reference some kind of math magic rule that's in my notes. Okay? So to get to all of our exponent rules, I'm going to start with the basis that, first of all, exponential notation is just a notation. Okay? The exponent is used to show repeated multiplication of the base. So the definition of an exponent is b to the n, where we have a base, and the n is our exponent. Some number multiplied by itself some number of times. That means if we have b to the n, that's the same as b times b times b times b times however many times n is. Whether it's five times, a hundred times, this notation tells us how many times we're going to multiply it. I call this kind of the expanded idea. We're going to expand um, our exponents. I'm going to lean into this today to lead us to all the different exponential rules. Because I don't want these rules to just be, oh, well, which rule do I use? Or I wish I had... You know, which page are my notes on on this? I'd like us to just be able to deal with exponents through this definition every time and get us to the correct uh, solution. So what's that going to look like? Well, first, let's practice a little bit of exponential notation. Let's look at some exponents and, and refresh our memory on what the outcomes are going to be. So the first thing, A says 6 squared. Well, 6 squared, according to our expanded exponential notation definition, is just 6 times 6, which is 36. Nothing new there. Nothing interesting there. Okay? B says negative 1 half to the third. Now, notice negative 1 half is in parentheses. Negative 1 half to the third this third power means I'm taking everything in parentheses times itself three times. So this would be written in expanded form as negative one-half times negative one-half times negative one-half. Negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Top times top times top, one times one times one is one. Bottom times bottom times bottom, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And we end up with negative 1 8. C says 0 0.84. Okay. Whoops, 0 0.84, not 4. Now, I guess I didn't exactly read the problem well enough. It wanted us to identify the exponent in our base. So our base here was 6. Sorry about this. I got into doing the calculations. Our base here was 6 on the first one, and our exponent was 2. I think we know that from from the you know from where we've been math-wise. Here our uh, base is uh, negative 1 half, and our exponent uh, is 3. And here our base is 0 
And then kind of a special note, there's this one's here for a reason. The special understanding is that our exponent here, when we don't see one, is one. Anytime we don't see an exponent, it's not zero, our exponent is one. So it's important to note that those invisible exponents, when we don't see them, are just one. It's not zero. Okay, something to the zero power, there's a whole rule for that. Everything that doesn't have an exponent explicitly written has an invisible exponent of one. We have that invisible exponent of one. Is that, that's going to be useful for us moving forward. All right, so now let's refresh our memory on evaluating these things, especially on A and B. Uh, what does that negative mean to us? Uh, the first one on A has negative 5 to the fourth. We notice that there's no parentheses. So this is actually negative out in front of 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Times itself four times. One, two, three, four times. What's 5 times 5 times 5 times 5? Well, I can get my calculator out. That's no big deal. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is 625. And to re refresh your memory, the x to the y button is a shortcut. Well, x squared is a shortcut. x to the third is a shortcut. But x to the y, we can type our base of 5. Hit the x to the y button. Okay, we've already done our base. And then it says we can put in our exponent of 4 and we get that 625. Now notice, I haven't dealt with the negative yet. This part here is 625. I still have the negative out in front, and we end up with a negative 625. Even though my exponent is even, we end up with an odd answer. Sorry, not odd, and a negative answer. Let's compare that to B, where we have negative five in parentheses to the fourth. What this tells us is we're going to take negative 5 times itself four times. Negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Okay? This stuff right here is a very common spot where people make their mistakes. How do we deal with things that read the same? Negative 5 to the fourth, negative 5 to the fourth. The parentheses matter because this now is going to give us Negative times negative times negative times negative is a positive 625. And notice we get very different answers. Notice our outcomes are very different. Negative 625 is not positive 625 and vice versa. So we have to make sure as we look at these that we're interpreting the notation correctly. That's why these are on here. The negative out front of our base to an exponent stays out front. That negative stays out front. We evaluate the base to its exponent, and we keep that negative sign out front. When the negative is grouped with the base, the base here is negative 5. Here the base is positive 5 with a negative out front. So it seems like a subtle distinction, but it makes all the, the difference as we work through these things. Okay, Let's look at C we get negative 0 0.2 to the third, to the third. Negative is grouped. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. Negative 0 0.2 in parentheses to the third. The negative is grouped with 0.2, so it's going to be done three times. 0 0.2 negative, uh, 0 0.2 is a negative, and negative 0 0.2. So we're going to end up with a negative. I might want to use my calculator here. Uh, 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. And 0 0.2 to the third is 0 0.008. Notice it's a negative. On D, we've got negative 0 0.2 to the third. Again, our base here is 0 0.2 with a negative out front. That's how we need to understand this. 
that means when I multiply this out, it's a negative out front, and we have 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0.2. Still gives us negative 0 0.008. Now we have a same answer, but that's because odd exponents, we kind of land in the right spot because negative, negative, negative is odd. It's going to stay negative, and we kind of get lucky. But with even powers, even exponents, and a negative in the base can be problematic. We have to be very sure of what we're doing. It can be problematic. We have a negative in the base, touching the base in some way, and an even exponent. We've got to be very particular on how we address it. Okay, and that's why we have this star by A and B here, okay? All right, that'll be a pitfall that's out there the rest of this uh, semester. You'll see it in calc or pre-calc as well. We're going to mess you up with negatives, uh, bases with even exponents, just to see, you know, if you're on top of your on top of your game on those. All right, let's look at what happens when we have bases that are the same while being multiplied by each other. Okay. So A says W to the third. There's this invisible multiplication symbol, W to the fourth. Even though it doesn't show here, they're touching, and so they're multiplying. Okay? When letters touch each other, they multiply. W to the third times W to the fourth. Breaking this down using our definition, our expanding idea, W to the third is the same as W times W times W. This is our W to the third. If we multiply that times W to the fourth, that's W, 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 W. There's our W to the fourth. And if we're multiplying these, it makes sense to rewrite this as W to the one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? W to the seventh. And this is leading us into our first exponent rule, and we can see what that is, where, hey, I've got w to the third, I've got w to the fourth, my solution is w to the seventh. Hmm, doesn't three plus four equal seven? And the answer is yes. And so our first rule that we're going to run into is that when we have the same bases, we can add the exponents. When same bases are being multiplied, we can uh, accumulate or add those exponents. So our rule would look like a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. We just showed this. We just used our, our regular definition of exponents to get to a simpler rule. Okay? And this would be, you know, this is what students the teachers kind of throw out there. I've seen uh, lessons on exponents where they put all the rules out there, and then we'll just go, we'll just do examples of them. How about we do a building block approach and we learn where these things come from? This looks like a foreign language. If this is the first time, like if I just threw this out there, here's our rule. You'd go, well, I don't know why it is, but I have to use it. Now we know why it is. Because if we get an example like w to the third times w to the fourth, w to the third in our expanded form is www. w to the fourth in our expanded form is www. If I take this entire thing, that's the same as w times itself seven times. And we notice that three plus four equals seven. We notice that. And if we did enough of these practice examples like this, just like this, we'd realize, hey, we just have to add the exponents when the bases are the same. Now, I don't think we need to go through five or six examples to show that this rule exists. It's pretty straightforward, okay? I'm telling you that it didn't just work this time. It will work all the times. How did math people come up with this? Like if I was just teaching these rules and this is like 
hey, take notes, here's your rule, you might wonder, how do they know this works? How would they come up with that? Well, how they came up with it was they just did a bunch of problems like this. Well, w to the third times w to the fourth is w to the seventh. w squared times w to the fifth is w to the seventh. Uh, w to the fourth times w to the sixth equals w to the tenth. They kept doing this process and recognizing and noticing, why don't we just add the exponents? Why are we doing all this work? And they got to this rule right here. The same base times another same base, we can add the exponents. So that leads us to B. If I have 2 to the third times 2 to the fourth, then my rule says I have the same base of 2. So I can add the exponents. This is the same as 2 to the 3 plus 4 which is 2 to the 7. Could I go this method to get there, my expanded way? Yeah, 2 to the 3rd is going to be 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the 4th is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this would be the same as 2 times itself 7 times. All right? So that's how we're going to go through all of these rules in chapter 13. I am not a big fan of giving you the list of all the exponential rules and then we just kind of practice and you hope you pick the right one. I want us to be able to understand we can always go back to this expanded notation and get where we want to be, even if the problems get more and more complex, which is what we're going to do. We're not going to keep it easy and simple like this. We're going to make, we're going to dress it up complicated, but you guys will have the skills to to deal with it and address it correctly. Let's look at t to the sixth over t to the fourth. t to the sixth over t to the fourth. t to the sixth over t to the fourth. Hmm. What do I know? Well, I don't really quite know how to deal with this, but I do know that t to the sixth is t times t times t times t times t times t six times. And I know t to the fourth is t times t times t times t. And I know my rules for fractions saying if I have something on top and something on bottom, they reduce down to one, they cancel. So this t cancels with this t. This t cancels with this t. This t cancels with this t, and this t cancels with this t. And all my t's are gone on bottom, and I'm left with one, two on top, t and t. Well, that's t squared over one, but I don't need to write over one. We typically don't write over one unless there's a, a reason for it, and there's no reason for it here. So we end up with t to the sixth over t to the fourth is t squared. And we think to ourselves, hmm, we inspect this. We think to ourselves, and we say, hmm, we're smart math people. What happened here? Well, we have a fraction where we have t to the sixth on top in the numerator. We have a, uh, a part where t to the fourth is in the denominator on bottom. <coughs> six and four, six minus four is two. I think, hmm, six minus four is two. I bet the rule is if I have a to an exponent, over a to another exponent, I can just subtract the exponents. a to the m over a to the n equals a to the m minus n. And this would be the rule that you would see in that list of 10 different exponential rules that look like a bunch of, gosh, where do I start type of stuff. Well, we can always get there through our expanding uh, exponential notation, and then using our old rules, reducing fractions, canceling, top and bottom, top and bottom. <coughs> okay. B says 5 to the 6th over 5 to the 4th. Well, that's going to tell me I have the same base. That 4 looks, looks like 54, sorry. 5 to the 6th over 5 to the 4th could be here. I have the same base. So that means I can subtract 
my exponents. And this is going to be 5 squared, which is just 25. Could I check this the long way? Sure. Let's check it and see if it's right the long way. The long way being, what is 5 to the 6th? 5, whoops, not cubed. I want 5 to the 6th is 15,625. So 5 to the 6th is that. And I'm going to divide that by whatever 5 to the 4th is. So 5 to the 4th, this would be the long way, 625. And 15,625 divided by 625 is 25. We get the same answer. We get to the same endpoint here, still 25. It's just that these exponential rules are supposed to make it so it's a little bit easier. In fact, we force you to use exponential rules because we very rarely will give you numerical uh, exponents, or sorry, ex numerical bases. We're really going to dive into the algebraic variable letters as our base to force you to use these rules because if we just use bases that were numbers, you could just use your calculator to get you there and uh, completely avoid these rules. And that's not what the point of this chapter is, okay? You're not going to be able to avoid the rules. You can't type t to the sixth in over t to the fourth in your calculator. All right, it's not going to get you there. So we got to lean into these rules. Here are your book definitions. Um, you don't have to write them down. We've got them. I used A instead of B. That's the only difference, okay? Um, obviously, they're going to add in, uh, they're going to name them for you. The first one we, that we did was the multiplication rule of exponents. If we're multiplying exponents, we add. So multiplying bases, we add the exponents. That would be the kind of lay term under If we're going to multiply the same bases, I should say the same. They have to be the same base. If we multiply the same base, we add the exponent. Similarly, if we divide the same base, we subtract the exponents. That would be if I were going to explain this to you in words. Oh, if we have the same a base being divided by the same base, we subtract the exponents. All right, let's do a few examples. Use the commutative and associated properties of real numbers and the properties of exponents to simplify the following equations. So A looks like a lot, and we're just going to dress it up. We're just going to, in math, we're going to make it seem more complicated. And I'm not saying it's not more complicated, but it's not enough to, you know, get gray hairs and tear your hair out and lose your mind. We just need to be organized and work through it. So we have negative 3p squared q to the fourth times 2p q to the fifth. As I work through this, my thoughts being experienced with this is that I start uh, with any numbers that are bases uh, and then um, deal with and then variables as bases. Okay, so I'm going to start with my numbers as bases. What are my numbers as bases? Negative 3 and 2. Well, negative 3 times 2 is just negative 6. And I've dealt with those pieces. Sometimes, you know, for organization reasons, you might just go ahead and kind of cross them out. That's okay. Get rid of the pieces that you've used. You Don't keep it a jumbled mess. Get rid of some things. 
I've underlined them so I know that I've used them. Now I have dealt with the numbers. Now I'm going to go ahead and deal with the variables. So my next variable is P. Q is not like P, not the same base, so I can't, there's no putting them together. This P is the same base as this P, and notice this P has that invisible one. This is actually P to the first. So P squared times P to the first is P to the third, because 2 plus 1 equals 3. So I've dealt with the P's. Now I can deal with the Q's. I have Q to the fourth times Q to the fifth. Four plus five is nine. So I get Q to the ninth. Now I've used different colors here to try to show you some organization. Maybe you want to do that as well. But it's it has a like term feel. I have to use the same bases. If I'm going to add exponents, they have to have the same bases. That's just our rule. I can't have PQ to the 6. There's not, I can't just combine these by adding their exponents. That would be incorrect. P squared combines with P. Q to the 4th combines with Q to the 5th. And I just write them down. Let's look at B, our subtraction rule. We have 16 W to the 9th, Z to the 3rd. Uh, over 4w to the 8z. I'm going to have the same thought process. I start with the numbers as bases, and then I work to the variables as bases. So I have to inspect. What are my numbers as bases? Well, my numbers are as bases are 16 as a base and 4 as a base. And 16 over 4 is just 4. 16 divided by 4 is just 4. I can go ahead and make my fraction bar. Four stays on top. You know, as we get deeper into this, you'll start hearing me say upstairs, downstairs type stuff because we got we'll be doing some of that. Uh, so the four, sixteen divided by four is a four on top. It's definitely not down below. Okay. If we wanted to get in the head into the deep end here, <clears throat> I could have sixteen. Uh, sorry, sixteen. Uh, over 4 is the same as 4 squared over 4. 16 is the same as 4 squared. And I would get 4 to the 2 minus 1 is 4 to the first, right? That would be us using our exponent rules. But we can just take 16 divided by 4 and get 4. Now I start working towards variables. I have w to the ninth, w to the eighth. I know 9 minus 8 is 1, so I get w to the first. If I wanted to, I could expand this to W9 times. However, well, okay, and then I could do eight times. And I could cross one at a time out, and you'd notice that nine will have one more than eight. There's one extra W on top. Z, Z to the third, Z squared, or sorry, Z to that invisible one, not squared. Z to the third over Z to the first. This is going to be 3 minus 1 is 2, so I get Z squared. And notice everything goes away in the bottom, and I just end up with 4WZ squared. I don't actually have it. I don't, well, I'm not going to write it over 1. All right. So that's 13.1. Let's take a look at 13.2. More properties of exponents. 13.2. More properties of exponents. 13.2. More properties of exponents. I would definitely write this property down. The power rule. And we'll talk about why it is. I know usually I give you an example. The last, the multiplication and the subtract, or in the division rule, the add and subtract rule, all that stuff, we, uh, I did an example that led us there. 
we're just going to jump right into that book definition. But I want to give you an example showing why this works. How it works is if we have a base to an exponent, in parentheses, to an exponent, we're actually going to multiply the exponents. And this is where uh, we start getting into um, misunderstandings on our exponential rules. Because this looks a lot like our multiplication rule. Understand that our multiplication rule, a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n that we just did, is not the same as a to the m to the n, where we get a m times n. They're just different. And this is probably the rule, as soon as we start working with it, and our addition rule, where things start really getting... Uh, we need some clarity because it's easy to get to use the wrong one. So examples help us understand it a little bit better. So an example, if I have a to the fifth to the third, a to the fifth to the third, that is the same as a to the fifth times a to the fifth times a to the fifth. Now I'm multiplying the same bases. I could expand this to a, 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 a. This one is a, 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 a. And this one is a, 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 a. And I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, a to the 15. Using our expanding notation rule. But this is the very long way. This is the long way, long way. Lots of O's in that long. This is the long way to get there, even though we get the correct answer. A shorter way is to recognize a power of a power, or the power rule. We have A to the fifth, which is a power, and then it's to a power. A to the fifth to the third means A to the fifth one, two, three times. Then this takes us back to, instead of going the long way and listing all 15, we recognize that we have the same base being multiplied by each other, and we can say this is a to the 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is a to the 15. Maybe it's easier to add those exponents, which was our multiplication rule in the last, in the last section. Okay? So this power rule is taking our multiplication rule on the previous section and, it, and making it one step higher in our understanding of exponential notation. Instead of doing either of these things, we could just say uh, a to the fifth to the third is same as a to the five times three, which is a to the 15. That's what this rule tells us. If you have a power to a power, you multiply them. Okay, we multiply them. So let's do a couple examples. Uh, example A says s to the fourth squared. I'm going to show you the long way, and then we can come back and recognize, hey, this is a power of a power. The long way, if we don't have our little note card with our notes telling us the math magic rule, the long way is saying s to the fourth squared is the same as s to the fourth times s to the fourth. And if we recognize the same base, being multiplied by each other, we could get s to the fourth plus s to the fourth equals s to the eighth, right at this spot. Or maybe we got to break it down more, and we got to say s to the fourth is s times s times s times s, and this s to the fourth is s times s times s times s, and we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, so s to the eighth. This, again, is the long way, but it gets us there. 
Maybe we become familiar with recognizing a base times the same base and we add the exponents. Or maybe we just recognize that s to the fourth is a power of a power. So power of a power is s to the four times two, which is s to the eighth. Okay. All of these ways get us there. We have a much better understanding of exponential notation and how it can get us there in different ways to the correct answer. And we don't have to just rely on noticing the correct rule and referencing the correct rule in our notes and having it just be this thing that I can't attach to. It's just this thing the teacher gave me. I don't know why it works. Now we're starting to get a feel for why these things work. And we should be able to reproduce them. If we can, if we can do this, we can do this. And if we can do this, we can do this, okay? B says three to the fourth squared. Power of a power, power rule, this is the same as three to the four times two, which is three to the eight. It is not, it is not, three to the sixth, where people start getting a little bit uh, too quick and jumping to these answers and not showing their understanding as they might add these when they should be multiplying them, okay? Last example we're gonna do today is C. We're getting close to uh, end of class time. Let's look at C together and recognize that this power rule works for everything in parentheses. So x squared, x to the fifth, to the fourth. Now there's a couple of ways we could hedge this. First thing you might recognize is that x squared and x to the fifth is really x to the seventh. And this is x to the seventh to the fourth because two plus five is seven. Same base, add exponents. x to the seventh to the fourth is the same as x to the seventh, x to the seventh, x to the seventh, x to the seventh. Well, that's x to the seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. You can see seven times four here. Seven times four here, or x to the 28th, okay? Now that's the way we can, we can deal with these being the same base initially. But if they weren't, we might have to do something different and show that this four gets distributed to both. This is the same as um, x squared x to the fifth, 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 four times, right? And we would still end up with x to the 28th. This could also be written as x to the two times four times x to the five times four. The 2 times 4 would be x to the 8th. The 5 times 4 would be x to the 20th. Again, same bases. We get x to the 28th. Okay? We're going to finish off uh, with this because it's 1050. And um, make sure you're taking a look at Connect Math. I think I'm going to put out another. Uh, you'll have another. Wednesday, we'll talk about your next assignment and your next quiz. And we're looking at a test.